We say, look, there are situations of peace and holding peace treaties and situations of forgiveness. And there is, are situations of weakness as well. Okay. And there are situations of strength and power and situations of war that cannot be avoided. Put everything in its proper position. Put everything in its proper position. There are ayats that talk about peace and doing peace treaties. And just like the Messenger وسلم, has done peace treaties with the kuffar. And we know in some of these treaties, they were the lower hand. They didn't gain the upper hand. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the upper hand afterwards. And the Messenger وسلم, accepted. Why? It is in its context. So you have places where there are peace treaties going on, for example. There are covenants being made by the Muslim leaders and by the disbelieving leaders. Khalas, a covenant is made, you cannot break that covenant now. You understand? So there is, here there is forgiveness and leniency and having relations and so on. And at other times, there is no place for covenants, for example. They're not reaching a covenant or, or there, it is a state of whatever happens, whatever reality that they are find in, like a state of war and there and so on and so forth. Then there there is what is appropriate for that situation. Don't take this context and apply it to the context of peace and covenants and so on. This is what the Kharajites do. That's why they cherry pick or take an ayah out of context and they say, oh, kill them all and kill this. La. This is in a state of war. When there is a whole nation, you have a leader and you have leaders of nations there and, the, and, and so on and so forth. And there is a, something that is inevitable. Whatever the reality is, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about that that is for the people of authority but i'm saying the reality that you that it is found in that it is a reality of war there is no peace don't go and break the peace based on this on this misunderstanding and there are and also also jihad is with capability as all of us know and as shaykh al-islam rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned in majmu' al-fatawa so you cannot use also the ayat of strength and the ayat that are in the context of war and then you start applying them in the context of peace or covenants or whatever and in the context of weakness as well and say uh, we're going to apply this ayala in this context fa'fu wasfah pardon and forgive this is what the ulama said this is not abdul aziz saying this is what the ulama said they said what is correct is that these are not abrogated there is a context for forgiveness and for pardoning and for and so on and peace and covenants and so on and so forth as the messenger salawat rabbi wa salamu alayhi did and there are con con contexts, as there is context, and there are realities where these things what? Where these things are inevitable, for example. So you apply the nusus that are suitable of this situation in its proper place, and you don't go in and you apply them in a state of weakness, for example, or in a state of peace, or in a state of covenants, or in a state of forgiveness, and so on. Because what is the what is the goal of, of jihad? What is jihad? The goal of jihad, as the ulama said, is that to teach Islam, spread Islam, huh? to ha and so on and so forth. To do da'wah, to, to have the relations and so on. So if that can be achieved, for example, without, without yani, the ulama, they say fighting and war and whatnot, it is not an end. It is not a goal in Islam. It is, it is not the goal. The goal actually is to have relations and to you can do da'wah and to teach and, and so on and so forth. So the people that, uh, that have deviated with their understanding is they think, and this is a sick understanding that it is the goal. No, fighting and killing. And so this is not the goal. Understand these things, ya akhwa, because these thing, things are, yani, are very important to understand and to rectify our thinking and set ourselves straight. Naam, Shaykh Usam rahimahullah ta'ala said it. Aywa, and this is a quote by Imam Ibn Abbas. That Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said there, are, there is no nasq, there is no abrogation, I'm reading. However, it is different in accordance to the uh, 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 conditions of the Muslims. Conditions of strength, conditions of weakness. Huh? And I add, I say conditions of, of covenants, conditions of peace, condi and so on. And this is of course for those in authority. But nowadays, ya Akwa, the problem is that we have this this certain people that have no fiqh, no understanding, no studying, no understanding of Islam, and they go and he just, whatever ayah he finds, he takes it, he might not even have read the whole Quran, takes it and puts it out of context, and then he starts saying, this is and jihad, and I don't know what, and this and that, and they cause so much destruction and harm for Islam, and Muslims and non-Muslims alike. And we must understand this, ya ikhwa. we must understand that there are people at certain places that are suffering from this. They're suffering from this ignorance.
And when we look at the ulama al rabbani like Imam ibn Baz and Ibn Utaymin and the Albani and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala and Ibn al-Qayyim and, 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 we find them talking about this, differentiating between positions of strength, positions of weakness, positions of inevitable war, positions of, of whatever relations you're having and, and, and positions of peace and positions of, positions of covenants between believers and disbelievers and so on and so forth. Every one of them it has what? It has its own proper place and its own context. Imagine someone comes and he obliterates all of this and he says, these are mansukh, um, fighting is always and we have to fight and they make fighting a goal. Even though Islamically this is never the goal. Killing and fighting and being killed and harming and so on, this is not a goal in Islam. The goal in Islam is what? To spread the da'wah. So if the da'wah spreads, that's it. The goal is met. To preserve, for example, the safety of Muslims and, and, and so on and having covenants so the safety of non-Muslims in Muslim uh, countries is guaranteed and that safety of Muslims in non-Muslim countries are guaranteed and having this. So it has a context. There are relations, there are covenants, there are and so on between countries, between nations, between continents. So we must understand. No, we have some people, as they say in English, willy-nilly from the street. Let me go and harm some people. Allahu Akbar, in the Quran it says so and so. Yeah, but without any type of understanding. It's like someone who goes to the, to the Quran and he says, Wailun lil musallin. Woe to those who pray, who make salah. And he says, there you go. That's it. I don't pray. We don't need to pray. Those who pray, woe to them. We say, continue the ayat. Continue the ayat. Alladheena hum an salatihim sahoon. Those that are heedless when it comes to their salah. Woe to them. So you shouldn't be heedless to your salah. So you cannot go and have a sick understanding and then and then wanting to apply it and causing so much crime. And this happens, ya ikhwa, every we get these sick mentalities, we get these sick applications, we get this ignorance in all religions and in without religion and with you understand barakallahu fikum. But alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah that when we have the ulama and the students of knowledge and so on that have what? that study, that read the whole Qur'an and memorize the whole Qur'an and study the ahadith and, and they show you, they say, look, this is the ayah and this is the ayah and this is the ayah. This is in a state of war. This is in a state of peace. This is in a state of... Uh, and they bring you the whole context to it. Therefore, we have also where the ayat were revealed. Yeah, and you have this ayah. It was revealed in Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, for example. This ayah was revealed in the battle of so-and-so. This ayah was revealed when there was peace and so-and-so. This ayah was revealed that weakness. This ayah was revealed in strength and so on so what is the benefit these ayat they are not abrogated so even if there are some of the ulama and some of the fudala that said it is abrogated we know that this is what abrogated we know that this is wrong this is not correct and the correct thing is that they are not abrogated and the ayat of pardoning and 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 uh, forgiving and forgiveness and peace and so on they have their own context they have their own context and they are valid and in in islam and the messenger وسلم, acted upon them Understand this, barakallahu fikum. And such matters, ya ikhla, we just talk about it generally, but such matters are left for the senior scholars, those who have authority, actually. Or those, so, so you have the people of authority, and also you have some senior scholars who have authority as well, like the mufti, for example, uh, or the hay'ah of kibar al-ulama, or the judge, some judges in courts and so on. So you have, you have the people of authority, and they are the ones, the people in authority, they are the ones who actually make these decisions and look into these matters and this is their burden, their taklif. Not the taklif of laymen and so on. And it is a huge mistake, a huge mistake. As Imam Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned, when we have the amma speaking about political matters and matters of this weight, matters that are so heavy and so dangerous and so on, it is an extreme mistake when we have the amma laymen and the general public talking about these things. No, we should know our place and we should know uh, what what we are good at and we only speak when there is what when there is no harm and that which is beneficial and when we do, when we don't have that and we cannot achieve that then we remain silent as the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whosoever who believes in allah and the day of judgment and then let him say goodness or he remains silent and uh this is none of our business. And the Messenger وسلم, said, من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعنيه. From the goodness of the Islam of a person is that he leaves that which he is not his business. And meaning also, يا that you're not good at, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the Quran, وَلَا تَقَفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us, do not speak about matters that you have no knowledge of. You have no knowledge of, don't speak about it. 
Who commanded us? Allah and the Quran. Therefore, we talk about that which we have knowledge of and we don't meddle into things that are not our specialty not, and we know nothing about. Do you understand? Because ya akhwa, everything that I just said is extremely crucial and extremely important. We can make a lecture about each and every point that we were just talking about. So I'm giving you these rules and these qawaid to, to live by actually. This is how we should live by. Not to get into things we're not good at. Talk about things, cause chaos. You understand, barakallahu fikum. And we see something for a mistake, for example, for the people of Imra saying that is overweight. It's not the overweight saying it is marjuh. And then we focus on it and so on. And we contradict the ulama of our time. La. We have a kabir that we go back to. We have a kabir. We have our seniors that we go back to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put them in that place. And they have the knowledge for it. And they have the wisdom for it. And it is, as I said, their taklif and their burden and what they are responsible of. Not us.